All right. In our last video, we saw how we added our code on the remote repository. And in this video, we'll see how we can actually uh, try uh, cloning our repository's code into this particular machine and we'll see how it actually works. So for doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this tab and let me just do a clear. And over here, I'm just going to create a new branch, uh, new probably a repository and I will show you how to do that. So mkdir uh, of uh, Cypress demo git, something like that. And then I'm just going to go to the Cypress and over here, you can see that there is no files at the moment because this is like an empty directory that we just created. And I need to clone the code that we just created in our last video. So for doing that, I'm just going to copy this particular repository and I'm just going to do this git of clone of this particular URL. And if I hit enter, you can see that this is the code just coming directly from our repository that we created in our last video. And now if I just do an LS, you will see there is a git basic Cypress folder. And let me just get into that particular uh, git basic Cypress folder and note over here at the moment, it is still on the Cypress uh, demo git folder. And once I get inside that, it is going to change to the git branch like that, like this. You can see it has changed to the main branch. So basically, at the moment, it is currently uh, located as a uh, like a within the main branch. So we moved from our local repository. We pushed the code in our last video to the remote origin branch. And now we are checking out the code from the remote origin. And then we are starting to work with that, which is quite cool and interesting. So we don't really need this one at the moment just for this demonstration purpose. We'll go from here moving forward. All right, so our code is sitting within the remote repository and now our developers or tester like you are going to be starting to work with that particular code. So we are going to open the Visual Studio code. I'm going to thrust this code because I know it's pretty thrustful code and I'm going to go to the um, Cypress JSON file. I'm going to set this to false at the experimental studio. Uh, I'm going to modify this file so you can see that currently it has changed the m which means it's in the modified state and now if i just do a git status something like that you will see that the cypress.json file has been modified which is cool so if you think that this file change that you have made is all pretty good and well enough then you can just do a uh, git add of the particular file like how we did before or if you think that you don't really want this particular file uh, modification that you have did. You can just do a git restore of the particular file name or hit the dot for the particular context and you will see that from the orange color it has again turned back to green which means it is currently in a pretty pristine state. So if I do a git status you will see there is no change happening which is cool. Oops, I just had to restart my machine since there is no battery. So, all right. So what we were doing before was we were just doing a get status and everything was working fine uh, to see once we do a reset, we just reverted the code back to its change. So let's do this. Now let's do a get status. You will see there is no change, which is cool. And now if I just do a get uh, once again, if I just do a changes over here, like this, uh, like false. And if I just do a git status, you will see this particular things has been modified. And I'm going to do a git add of cypress.json file, which means I'm adding the particular file. So plus one file. And now if I just do a git status, uh, you will see that there is a file being currently in the staged state. So this file is currently ready for us to commit on the remote branch. So at the moment on the remote branch, we have the file in what state? So you can see that the package.json file, uh, so this file, cypress.json file, you will see that it is currently the true state and we have modified from two to actually false. So if I do a git of commit and then I'm going to say am for amend and give a message, I'm going to say uh, turned off the experimental feature of Cypress. You can see that currently there is a number here coming up. This is the commit number 
or the commit ID and it tells me that we're doing a change directly on the main branch and we have turned off the experimental feature with this particular message. There is a one file change and one insertion and one deletion. So now if I just do a git status once again, you will see that there is no thing uh, I mean, available, but your branch is ahead of the origin main by one commit, which means even from the original main branch, your code is actually ahead of that by one commit that you have just made, right? So now if you just do a git logs, this is the new we have never seen so far, sorry, git log, and you will see within this log, it tells me that the author execute automation with cartmcarrotgmail.com. You remember, this is the one we just got from the config of list. This one, this is exactly what is coming up over here. The author has execute automation at cartmcarrotgmail.com. It's coming up for us. And it tells me that there is one commit like added all code for the first time. And there is a turn off the experimental feature of Cypress. But you will see that this particular code is origin main, origin head. So the head is actually sitting over here. But this time the head is actually sitting on the main branch. So there is a commit which is not equal to the origin main. The head has been changed to the main branch, which is my local branch. So I need to push this particular code change to the repository so that the origin main and the origin head are going to be the same. So you can see there is a arrow here indicating there is a one code needs to be pushed. So for doing that, we're just going to do a git push of this particular branch. We don't really have to specify. If you don't really specify, if you just hit enter, uh, it knows, the git knows that this is already in the remote branch. Uh, it's it already focusing on the uh, remote repository. Uh, it, can, it can push the particular code change back to that particular uh, origin. And now it has been pushed. And now if I just do a oops, log over here, you will see that the head main is now equal to the origin main of origin head, which is cool. So I could able to see this particular log as well. So this way we could actually make sure that our code is actually been up to date. And now if I go back and if I refresh this code from the true, it has now changed to false, which means there is a change happened directly on our repository. So all these days we have been working directly on the main branch, but this is not the right way of doing it. Definitely, right? Nobody's really going to work with the uh, main branch straight away. They are going to somehow work with the different branches. That's how it's going to be, which we are going to be discussing in our next video to talk about branches.